I hope by the time they get older that there are going to be so many more. You know, you're helping pave the way in so many ways. And then we've watched so many fantastic women at the show that are bringing the light that girls fish too. And it's not because we want to be someone that we're not. We want to be who we are and feed the passion that's within us. And I was born with that just like my daughters were. And it's just helping others to see that you can do it. It's about the time, the effort, and all the work that you're willing to put into it. You're going to get back whatever you put into it. So. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. Inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Welcome to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I have a very special guest for you today that I'm really excited. I can't believe I haven't had her on the show yet. Um, she's been in the industry a long time, like grew up in the industry, and uh, I look forward to her sharing a little bit about her story with, with everyone. So Melinda Mize, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, and it's so good to finally catch up with you. You're just everywhere. That's what it is, you know? <laughs> I don't think either of us slow down very much. Right. So it's good to finally be in the same place with you. I watch your adventures every week, so it's really good to get here face-to-face -face with you. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I think I first got connected with you when you were working for Hook. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and before that I worked for Costa, and before that Pradco Outdoor Brand. So I've done a little bit of everything in the industry now. Yeah, for sure. And who are you working for now? So, Bahio Sunglasses, brand new brand. We just launched in March, so it's been full throttle ever since. And what do you do for them? So, I manage our freshwater community. That's okay. what we call it. It's like freshwater marketing, but we believe um, fishing is a community, so we call it our community. All right. So, how did you get in this whole crazy business? Oh, goodness. See, I grew up with parents that both fished, so I never thought it was weird that women fished. And so my mom was a huge influence in my life and my dad, and I traveled with them whenever I was growing up, and I got the opportunity to really learn about the industry, and I fell in love with it. And it became my dream not just to fish, but to make a living in the industry because I felt like I was more consistent at getting a paycheck real life than getting a paycheck in a tournament. So I definitely needed to work in the industry. <laughs> Yeah, so it's always good to, you know, if you know what you're passionate about, to just stick with that because that's, I think, what life is all about. I feel really sad for people that kind of get stuck in these ruts and they're not happy with what they're doing. And I was that way for a while. I mean, I worked in the music industry, which was my passion when I was, you know, younger. And I did that, but I was sitting behind a desk all day long. And I'm such an outdoors person that it was really starting to grind on me. And I actually came across this book that kind of changed everything for me. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this author named Jen Sincero. Um, she, she wrote this book called You Are a Badass. Oh, I have heard <laughs> you have that. heard of that? Yes. And so, um, I read that book and then she has another one called You're a Badass at Making Money. Yes. And I was like, and it's all about just, you know, following your passion, just throwing caution to the wind because the universe has your back. Like, you know, you're meant to do what you're meant to do, you know? Right. And so if you just go for it, which is a scary thing, but if you just go for it, uh, oftentimes things end up working out and that's been the case for me for sure um, when I started this podcast and got into the whole fishing and boating industry and so I encourage listeners out there to you know follow your passion like you have um, which has been awesome. I have two nephews one of them just graduated high school this year I have another one that's 15 and that's been my biggest tip for him find something that you love to do every day because if you do you're not going to be unhappy because if not, you're going to get burnt out and you're going to feel like a hole in you. You know, there's a hole in your part of your life that's just not really fulfilled. But if you can find a way to work in something that you're really passionate about, that you want to make a difference in and make it better, you're never going to feel like you're really working. You're going to feel like you're making a difference and you're being part of a solution. And I feel like that has been what I've been doing the last 10 years. 
for sure. So let's talk a, a little bit about tournament fishing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when did you first start? You probably started super young, right? I did. <laughs> uh, my first time I ever fished, um, like we used to fish on Memorial Day every year. There's this big bass tournament. They started me at seven. Wow. And it is something that we still do to this day. We all try to go fish it. We'll do boys against girls or, I mean, we'll split up. Uh, kids against adults it's fun now my nephews are involved in it and I can't wait for my daughters to fish it for the first time but I got I got involved with tournament fishing as soon as my parents could sign a waiver for me to go so I started fishing the BFLs then I started in the bass opens I fished um, as a co-angler at the women's bass master tour came around and I had the opportunity to fish that for a few years and that was an incredible experience, and I've gotten to fish a couple of the LBAAs, okay. just two, okay. because my schedule never lines up. But now I'm fishing the BFLs, the Toyota Series, the Bass Opens, and anything local I can get on the water for. That's awesome. Um, you know, I just started with the LBAA. I had my first tournament last year as a co-angler just to kind of see how, how it all worked and then jumped right in with both feet as a boater, which is kind of crazy, but that's kind of how I learn. Um, is just to just do it. Now, I do see, you know, these ladies are pretty amazing and I probably could have got a lot of more lot more experience like spending some more time at the back of the boat fishing with all these amazing ladies but for me I, I kind of like I'm a captain I kind of like to be in control and um and it's definitely a learning process but it's been a lot of fun so I think it's important to challenge yourself and you learn something every time you're on the water and sometimes it might be you learn what not to do and sometimes mistakes are costly but they make us better for our next adventure on the water every every time we go and people tell me they're, I get just as excited every time I catch a fish as I did whenever I was little. My brother asked me last year, he was like, are you ever going to stop giggling? And I was like, no, if I do, I'm going to stop fishing because right. I get so excited. And um, it's exciting to get to spend time on the water with somebody else that you don't know because then you get to know them what makes them tick, and you learn little things from them. So even from your co-anglers, you might pick up something that they're doing because everybody has this special thing that they do better than someone else. Mm -hmm. And I've learned so much through the years just by fishing with other people. Absolutely. I've learned so much from my co-anglers mm -hmm. already, and even in practice. You know, I always try to practice with somebody, although... I do think I do want to try doing some practice just on my own sometime just to see if my mindset is different because I'm always thinking about my co-angler. I do fish a lot by myself in practice because I'm so concerned with if they're having a good time and I put so much pressure on myself in practice that sometimes I need that time out there to just get my mind right because I'm already nervous leading into a tournament. I, I get terribly nervous, even though I've been doing it for years. And it's just because you are so passionate and you want to do well that you don't want to ever accept mediocrity. And so I'll get so nervous. I need, I need a day by myself. And I always take the first day that I'm practicing by myself. Then I'll add somebody to the boat if I'm ready. But if I still feel like I need a little more time figuring out things, then I might not do it until I've had a couple of days. And that's just for my comfort because I don't want to put any extra pressure on myself bringing somebody else along. Yeah, I definitely need to try that on the next tournament. We've got the Classic coming up in yes. September. That's such a fun event, though. I got to fish that. I won a wild card. Okay. I won the Dardanelle wild card and got to fish the Classic. And it was such an incredible experience. And I have to say, I've fished tournaments that were co-ed, and I've fished female-only tournaments. And there's something about the camaraderie that you get from a bunch of female anglers. And whenever I came back from that tournament, I had heard the AOI speeches. And I, I, like, I teared up because everybody has different dreams. My dreams may be different than yours or somebody else's, but I watch people's dreams come true at those tournaments. And 
it really just showed me that you have to respect everybody's journey. If it's different than yours, that's incredible. But to have an avenue like the LBAA that is there for women who feel comfortable with other women is powerful. And to watch people's dreams come true, like Fish in the Classics, your first year as a boater, I mean, that's incredible. And it's going to be an experience that I hope that you leave with that same feeling I did because it was it was so amazing to see all these incredible women doing all these great things yeah they um they always amaze me at every tournament and these ladies have to sacrifice so much to be able to fish these things and it's just amazing to watch them i mean i i I fish it but i kind of feel like a little bit of an outsider not for any reason that you know on them or anything like that but just myself like because they've been doing it so long and i'm so brand new to it but it's just i'm in awe every time and um i'm really looking forward to the classic it's my first three-day tournament so that's going to be interesting to see you know uh i'm exhausted after two days so three days will be interesting but it really will and the best thing about a three-day tournament is you can stumble one day and you can still be right back at it my the one that i got to fish i had seven pounds the first day and linda gessner had 20 pounds the first day and i ended up coming in second by like ounces because uh, the next two days i was able to put something together and so don't ever think that you're out of it in a three-day event it allows so much room to move, which is scary if you start at the top because yeah. you're, you're the one that everybody's chasing. But it, it'll be a great time. Definitely feel like fishing in shape is definitely different than being in shape. I always tell people I, I'm out of fishing shape. And people don't understand what that means until you're fishing a three-day tournament. And you're absolutely worn out. You're not just physically worn out, but you're mentally exhausted. Um, and so it's, I have been trying to walk and get healthier this year, mm-hmm. eating a little more clean than my normal Mexican food every day <laughs> and beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been trying, but still, uh, fished a three day the other day and I was worn out. Like I call it a fishing hangover <laughs> after it because you just kind of decompress, mm-hmm. but there's a day where you just need to. From billion-dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations, big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option. How do they afford it all? (laughs) That big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick-and-mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Take it for yourself after that. Yeah. I imagine so. Yeah, when I get when I get home from iCast, I'm gonna be hitting the gym, <laughs> hitting the rowing machine. <laughs> I think rowing they say works out like eighty some percent of your muscles. So that's I figure that's the most efficient workout. So that's kind of what I'm gonna focus on. But I may need to try that. Yeah. I've been doing like these little arm workouts that I find on YouTube. <laughs> 
Nice. Um, so you mentioned Linda Gessner. It's funny you mentioned her because that's who I was picturing in my head when I was talking about these ladies that have been doing it for so long and they're so amazing and who I could have benefited from fishing from the back of the boat with, I hear from all these other co-anglers, you know, all the amazing things they learn. And I'm like kind of jealous a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. I actually took a step back and I fish as a co-angler now, um, on the co-ed events that I fish, like the BFLs, the Toyotas, and the Bass Opens. And honestly, I did that because I'm a mom of a five- and six-year-old little girls. And so I got to realizing whenever I was fishing these week-long events, I was having severe mom guilt. You were talking about the sacrifices other ladies make. Uh, Some of them are moms. And I, I wasn't doing well, like, mentally, and I wasn't being my best on the water too and I realized that and so the last two years I've fished strictly as a co-angler and it's changed my life because I enjoy fishing so much more and I don't have that added weight that I'm not being a good mom because that was too much for me to carry and I realized that and so now I have so much more fun on the water and I can just relax and use my instincts and I think that if you have something hold you back whether it's finances or a relationship or uh, being a parent, you're never going to be able to be your best self on the water. Um, you're always going to have that in the back of your mind and fish, fish different because of it. And able, you know, right now I'm in a great place overall and that allows me to be better on the water, honestly. So talk about your girls. (laughs) So you're getting them into fishing pretty good, aren't you? Oh my goodness. They have loved fishing since they were born. It's the weirdest thing. I, you always think that people try to make little girls into these breakable things that need to be in little cute dresses and bows all the time. And these girls love worms. They love insects. They love fish. They've wanted to pet fish ever since they were born. But they'll go all day. They want to fish longer than I do, which is mind-blowing. That's awesome. But the biggest thing we do is we take them fun fishing. We don't necessarily just take them bass fishing. We take take them to catch crappie or bluegill. Um, we run noodles for catfish. Mm-hmm. But we just teach them to love outside more than anything. And with that, they find this joy and we never pressured them to fish. They don't want to fish. We don't, but they always have wanted to. (laughs) So we've been blessed. Um, and then one of them hunts, one of them doesn't hunt. Like my five-year-old has a imaginary pet deer. So she's super anti hunter because her pet deer imaginary now could get hurt. So so they're characters. They keep me laughing, but they make me better every single day. Uh, They push me to be better. So my six-year-old, I always say, my girls will humble you quicker than anything. They tell everybody that they can fish better than me because mommy only catches one bass. Because a lot of times you're fishing really tough lakes. And as a co-angler, if you're fishing behind a really talented angler, there's not a lot left. Right. And so I've I've brought in one a lot of times, and I was thankful for those one right. every time. Yeah. My <laughs> fear is always zero. <laughs> I, I've lived that fear <laughs> too many times. Yeah. But and so I actually weighed in. I did really good in a tournament the other day. I won one last fall, and then I did really well in a tournament. And nice. they were there getting to watch me weigh in on that big stage and I weighed in a limit that day and they're like mommy is this your first limit to catch and I'm like girls you'll be nice to me so they keep me on my toes and they push me to be a better person you know a better human uh you know and a better mom every day well it's such a blessing I talked to so many people where the they just can't get their kids into fishing they're just not interested and so you're super blessed to have that Oh my gosh, I know. Because I reached a time in my life where I really didn't want to go either. I was involved in every school program, every sport. And so probably from like 14 to 18, I really took a step back in fishing. But I think it made me hungrier whenever I actually got to get get back on the water. But some people, it's just not their thing. Uh, You know, dance or gymnastics. And that's what I am doing fishing. Uh, they've motivated me to fish more because I want to tell them to dream whatever dream they want. Like, it doesn't have to be fishing. Uh, find your passion and let's go after it. Like, if it's softball, if it's, I don't know, 
disc golf, like you, you name it. But let's get you involved. And so it's more of just creating opportunities for them to find what they love. But so far, the outdoors is their thing, for yeah. sure. That's awesome. They're going to grow up like you did, not realizing that there's not that many women in the sport. And I hope by the time they get older that there are going to be so many more. You know, you're helping pave the way in so many ways. And then we've watched so many fantastic women at the show that are bringing the light that girls fish too. And it's not because we want to be someone that we're not. We want to be who we are and feed the passion that's within us. And I was born with that just like my daughters were. And it's just helping others to see that you can do it. It's about the time, the effort, um, and all the work that you're willing to put into it. You're going to get back whatever, you know, you're going to get back whatever you put into it. So, And it's great with the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, what they're doing with the Women Making Waves campaign, and a lot of the influencers are here at ICAST. We're going to do another event at the Miami Boat Show this January. So it's great to see uh, organization like that stepping up and seeing, you know, that we need to support women, get them more um, recognized in the industry. They challenged us, the president um, of the RBFF challenged us to walk around the show and take a look at some of the signage and marketing and see how many women, how many booths are representing women in their marketing. And I think um, I was talking to Nicole Jacobs earlier and she had walked around and I think she said she only found five. Um, That's one thing that I'm really pumped about Bahia. Uh, They believe there's nobody different on the water and they, we have, I think three women on our booth and it's something that I've seen the focus more and more, though, from brands. I'm hearing so much positivity. Even if I'm not sponsored by them, I've been amazed at how many people who have been following, like, what I've been doing on the water. And that's that's different. It hasn't always been that way. Right. I mean, before, it was a boys' club, is what I call it. Um, but I think the tone has changed so much in the last few years, even, Uh And I think that there's been so much more positive movement around women in fishing. I I never get treated like a woman. I get treated like an angler from the other anglers. And that says a lot. Whenever I was 18, 19, I was treated like a girl, you know. But I think it's just growing up, uh, meeting people, gaining respect, but trying to be authentic and just showing that I love it. I don't care. Like, the bass don't care that I'm a girl, you know. They don't care that somebody's um black brown green they don't care they care about what you're gonna feed them (laughs) and if you entice them to buy and so i think if people cared less about people's political affiliations um their i mean their gender i mean anything it would be a better place Mm -hmm all the way around like if people had the same mentality that bass do right yeah we can learn a lot from bass i mean as how to treat people just bite (laughs) that's great in the work in (laughs) yeah that's great um yeah you know and you're you're authentic like you, you mentioned authenticity um you've gain that respect and there's a lot of other ladies out there right now gaining that respect and i think that that those ladies that are really getting after it and showing these guys that hey we're just as good you know are really helping to move that needle yeah it's just showing that hey we love this too we want to be a part and it doesn't have to be me or you it's just about going fishing and at at the end of the day my boyfriend and i talk a lot about it he's been my huge supporter because he actually was like pushing me to get back and fish in more tournaments and he's just like, you know, it's fishing. It is not rocket scientists, brain surgery, anything. It's fishing. Women can do those amazing things, too. But it's just about loving what you do. And people take it so seriously sometimes. They get caught up in it and don't realize that at the end of the day, it's a passion. It's something that brings joy to our life. I always like what Jen Ripple says. Um, fishing is fishing, and fishing is supposed to be fun. Exactly. I'm, I'm telling you, it is, that is the biggest key right there. I told a young lady yesterday, she came to the booth, she's going to be an incredible asset to the female journey. And I was just like, don't ever take it so seriously you make this work. Because whenever you do, you're going to lose some of that fire. Because I did it. 
and um, taking a step back allowed me to fall in love with it again. But if you fall in love with fishing, you'll never you'll never be disappointed if you lose. I mean, you're going to be disappointed, but you'll work harder. You will you won't be focused on the financial aspect. You'll always love it, even if you can't fish professionally because of finances. You'll still go fishing, you know. But if you just focus on greatness or finances and or you know, being a superstar, one day that fire will burn out because you're doing it for the wrong reason. But if you do it because you love it, you'll always be motivated. It's great. Great advice. Um, I could chat with you all day. I know you got to get back over to the booth, but um, do you have anything coming up that you want to mention or... I'm going fun fishing. I'm going smallmouth fishing. That's another thing that everybody should do. Take some time. Um, I'm going up north for a week. Where are you going? I'm going to Detroit to catch big nice. smallmouth. And we may make a journey over Sturgeon Bay somewhere I haven't fished. I try to fish places I've never fished before. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I've got some big tournaments coming up this fall. I've got the Toyota Championship. And then I just qualified for the Bassmaster Team Trail Championship. Nice. That I get to Congrats. fish with my boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. So I'm super excited um, about both of those and ending the year on a high, high note. Yeah. Well, I just got back from Lake Erie smallmouth yeah. fishing. Yeah, I got back on Saturday. And let me tell you, these fish, I don't know what it was, but, I mean, you set the hook, and the next thing you know, this fish is jumping up out of the water, and then it's back down, and then it's the battle. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm so pumped up about that. Awesome. And then I'm going tuna fishing up Ooh. north, too. So I have these bucket list fish that I've been yeah. working on. Um, I have a goal of a 10 pounder. I've never been offshore fishing, which I'm about to remedy. I caught a paddle fish this year. It was a 70 pounder. Well, I've caught multiples, but the biggest was 70. And so I'm just trying to challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone and do new things. Nice. We, uh, we got to fish the Disney chain yesterday for a couple hours and I was really hoping for that 10 pounder I mean we caught a lot of fish but it was just so much fun and so you're right those things are so important to get to do so awesome well I'll be uh, following you um, is there somewhere where people can follow your fishing adventures yeah um, Melinda Mai is on Facebook and then Melinda dot Hayes is weird on Instagram <laughs> okay. and it's uh, H-A-Y-S no E yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll put links to that in the show notes for this episode. I'm so glad we finally got the chance to do this. And in person is always more fun than over the phone. So um, excited for you, and we'll be following your adventures. Same with you. I can't wait to see where you go next. All right.